Actually, they're pretty similar. They vibrate. If I turn on this motor on this tray, you can see them vibrating. Jelly shake. That's what they do best. But if you look closely, these jellies are not vibrating or shaking in exactly the same way. In fact, that's the problem with quartz crystals. You can never get two quartz crystals that have exactly the same vibration. Because it depends on exactly how they were prepared. So although we've gone a little bit back to nature with this quartz crystal, isn't there something else in nature that gives us the absolute measure of time? Well, there is, in the atom. Now, atoms are very, very small, and they vibrate very, very quickly. So it's possible to use these to measure time. But this sounds like a job for physicists. So let's go and see what exactly they came up with. And here is a typical physicist. <laughs> and he's the very proud owner of this, an atomic clock. Now again, it's not exactly something you'd strap on your wrist, but it's very, very accurate. The most accurate atomic clock if it would have been possible to set them off at the time of the dinosaurs, wouldn't have lost a second by now. Now, having said this, there's something slightly strange about our definition of a second today. Because everybody's got atomic clocks. So just like in history, when nobody wanted to have to agree with somebody else's clock, Who's got the atomic clock that defines the second? The answer is nobody. Because what is done now is an average is taken over all of the atomic clocks in all of the countries. And that is used to define the second. So there's actually no one clock in existence that measures truly what we call one second now. But why do we need to split the second? But it turns out that the answer is very much related to what we saw with the railways. The railways needed synchronization to synchronize the trains. Well, the information age has replaced the steam age. And so trains have been replaced by data. Now, data travels at the speed of light. And there's nothing in the universe that travels faster than light. So you can imagine how accurate the clocks and the synchronization is needed to manage all this data. Well, we're going to illustrate this precision now. Because Bipin's bringing on what is a model of a really amazing application of atomic time. This is a model of the global positioning system. It consists of 24 satellites constantly orbiting the Earth, such that wherever you are on the Earth, you have four satellites above you. Now, each of these satellites contains an atomic clock, and they're all synchronized. So if you were to measure the signals, the time signals given out by the four satellites that are nearest you, and compare the time taken for that signal to reach you from these four satellites. Very much like in the, history, in the story of navigation of Harrison. You could use time to actually measure and determine your position on the Earth. And that's exactly what one of these receivers does. It picks up the signal from these atomic clocks orbiting the Earth in the satellites. Now, Elia is up on the roof. Can you hear me, Elia? I can, Neil. Great. What have you got Well, on I've the got screen? the GPS receiver here in my hands, and you can see on the display, it's telling me my position at the moment is 51 degrees, 30.571 minutes north of the equator, 
and 8 degrees 0.564 west of Greenwich. Can you show us how many satellites? Yes, I've got other screens on here which also show us where we are. You see it's got a map of the world built in, so it's telling us we're somewhere near Westminster. And this screen tells us we're picking up signals from six satellites. Now, Elia, can you move across the roof so we can actually see the change? And this change is going to be very small, but the change in the readings on right. the receiver. Let's try that. Yes, Neil, I think you can see quite clearly that the upper display is now saying 0.579 degrees north, before it was 0.570, so only that tiny movement across the roof, this is picked up. Right, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Elia. In fact, this positioning, this ability to detect position on the Earth has an enormous number of applications. You may have seen some of the applications discussed for motorists, but there are also applications for sight disabled people and even probably for some more surprising customers sheep <laughs>